Do you know that there is an effortless way to create a face centered cubic lattice cell structure? In this video, I will show you how to create such structure beginning from a cylindrical truss, then to a unit cell, then a 2x2 two two and 3x2 represent the volume element of such lattice structure. Let us sit back and relax as we get started with this modeling. As we start, let us meet Megan. She is a staff of an aerospace company and she works in the research and development unit. The company is developing a new additive manufacturing production line. They hope to produce structurally sound aerospace parts produced by the 3D printing technology, especially using the selective lesser melting method. Her boss, Maxwell, invited Megan to his office. Megan, you've really settled into the company, and we think ever so highly of you, began Maxwell. You know about the 3D printing project, asked Maxwell. Of course, replied Megan. I think it will take the organization to the next level, Megan continued. You are right, Megan. I will want you to lead the initial exploratory work on a 3D printed prototype just as a proof of concept. You will receive every support you need from me, Maxwell paused as he waited for Megan's reply. I am very excited, Maxwell. Thanks for this honor, Megan said excitedly as she proudly adjusted her pose on her seat. All right, Maxwell continued as he stood up. Let me know of any help you'd need. I am open for a chat if you need it at any time. As Megan left Maxwell's office, she started thinking of her first steps. With a piece of paper, she quickly drafted a plan. Number one, use the first centered TV lattice structure. Two, create a unit cell of the model. Three, create two by two and three by two representative volume element of the structure to test the structural performance of the prototype. And four, export these designs into STL files for use in the 3D printer. And just like that, Megan set off to work. Let us see how she's getting on. As Megan begins the problem, she decided to consult a literature that will help her in doing this. And this is a journal that she's considering. So it's a scientific report journal on this. The unit cell that she wants to use to do this is a single unit cell. And the key here is that it has to be face centered. So that means each face of this structure would have a face centered arrangement on it. So on this face, we've got this, we've got that, and we've got that, and that's what she has to have in. Now, in terms of the designing of the virtual domain, the candidate design that she chose is something that looks like it's a 3D system with a cubic arrangement with a length, width, and height of 34.6 millimeters. And this is how the dimensions are going to look. Now to look more closely as to what she's proposing to do. So the diameter of a strut that she will use will be three millimeter in diameter, with a strut angle of 45 degrees in this initial design, the strut length from this point to that point will be 48.93 millimeters. And of course, her design will be a face centered cubic lattice cell structure. So let's go in down and see how she begins to work on this. All right, so as we get started in this abacus, so the first thing we need to do is to create a cylindrical truss that represents the system. Just click on the part and then I'm going to call it truss one. And it's going to be created by a sweeping method. So I just need to put the coordinate positions will be minus 20, minus 20, and then 20, 20. So that's the arrangement. Okay, so click done. So that's fine. Then I just need to sketch the system that we want. So basically, and the origin here, zero, zero, and we wanted that three, zero for a radius of that. So that we have a diameter of six, so we click done. So that represents the first truss. So we just need to create a second one by creating a copy. So a copy will be copy two. And all I need to do with this copy is to go under the part sketch and flip this around. So how do I do that? So there is this button, say press and hold. So this is the rotation button and I want to move it. So I'll select that, click done. This is the center where I'm rotating it and then 90 degrees. So that gives it all in that angle. So we'll click done. Okay. Now with that, then we're going to regenerate this feature. So we have the two system code together. So all we need to then do is to go to the assembly module and bring the two instances together. So this is a truss one and two. So we're going to bring them together and then we need to match them. So I'm going to call it truss arm. Okay, one. And we have everything together the way it should and then we'll draw a box around it and this is fine. So we've got a truss arrangement exactly the way it is, which is one face, one. This will appear on all six faces of this face center cubic lattice cell structure. But what we want to do is to trim it to size. So how do we do that? So, okay, so let's get it back into the asymmetric view. I need to probably go back to the part module and then right within here, I'll click on this to create a datum. 
xy plane on the datum so maybe let's try something five so this is just an offset they want to use this datum to extrude through the material and, and then we now click the extrude option so this is the plane that we're going to use and the vertical line will be the line right in the center there so that becomes the system we're working with so i just want to start from here and then probably end around there and then we build a bigger one around it so that it's done and then we can extrude cut through the material so we now have what it's the dimension to size exactly how it should be so all we then need to now do is just to create duplicates of this so how do we go about that so we go back to the assembly module and then create a pattern of this so i select that click done now it's created a multiple set case so we don't really need so i just need to take out one of them and change the orientation to the z-axis okay and i'll still keep the distance of the 6.6 .6. so this becomes a two-phase arrangement so all we then need to do is just to duplicate this and create multiple instances of that. But before we do that, we need to match the two together. So I'm going to check, call it trust to arm, okay, number one. So again, we remove all intersecting boundaries and select and keep that. So this is fine. So we have the system as it should be. So all we need to do is to create duplicates of that. So can I create the pattern? All right, so select this. Okay, so we've got a system, so I don't really need that. And maybe the one at the top is fine. So we've got it that way, but we want to rotate this. So how do we do that? So there's this option of rotating the instance. So select the instance and it's asking us, how do you want to rotate? So clearly I could rotate about this X axis. So I select that by 90 degrees and click fine. So that's okay. So it's rotated it by 90 degrees. So what we can see, okay. So if we go to part instances, so you could see the two systems are fine. So one is rotated, the other one isn't. So all we need to do is to move this one to the position it should be by using the translate button. So we'll select this. So how do we do that? So let's say we we'll translate from this point to that point. Okay, so now it looks correct as it should be. So we have it perfectly arranged as it should be. So the next thing is to create the other face. So how do we create the other face? Again, we we'll just do a patterning as we did before, okay? Now, again, I take this out, so that one is fine. However, this extra one needs to be rotated on a different axis. So, okay, so select this, click done. So how do we rotate it? We're going to rotate it about the Y axis by 90 degrees. All right, so we have it perfect as it should be. So it's lining up properly. All we need to do is to move it from where it was, from that point to this point. And then we'll click OK. So if you then study it carefully, you can see that everything sort of looks right as we expect. So we've got all these systems on the four faces, on the six faces of this cubic unit cell. And that means we can go ahead and put in. So the next thing is to match all of them. So we're going to call it FCC unit cell. So let's just call it FCC unit cell and all that. And then select everything. This is fine. So we've got the structure, but clearly it's got things protruding on the edges. And so what we need to do is to trim it off. So how do we do that? So we go back to the FCC unit cell, extrude cut. So let's say I select that face and select this edge. So that gives me the possibility of extrude cutting to dimension. So I'll click on that. So you start from here to there, and then you start from there to there. So that looks all right. So we extrude cut, that's perfect. So we've got one extrude cutting. So we need to do on this other face. So we'll do the same again, select that. So click that edge. So that looks all right. So again, we take our square, start from there, finish here, and then get everything in place. Okay, so that looks all right. And then, so we now have a perfect unit cell with a first center cubic structure and everything looks exactly how it is. So this is the first task that Megan wants. So it's, she's created this case. And then the next stage is to move on to try and create the other duplicates, which are the RV, the present volume element for two by two and three by two. So how do we do that? So what we're going to do is, okay, so this is the first system created. So let's just rename it and call it, okay, the unit cell. And then we create a duplicate of that. So if we create a copy and call it RVE two by two, Okay, and then within this RV 2 by 2 so let's look into the assembly module. So clearly there was only one system that is evident in the assembly module. So all we just need to do is create a patterning of this system. So you select that. Okay, so that looks all right. So you've got the right patterning and then you click OK. So basically it's created one row. 
So we've got one row of the system. So all we need to then do is to create another row that lines up with the system. So let's create the pattern again, a linear pattern. So we click that. So clearly there's too much in this. So we cancel this. What we need to do is to change the direction of action to the Z axis. Okay, change direction of action to the Z axis. And then the final thing, because there's clearly a space around here, we need to move the system so that it makes a connection with that. And that's what we will finally do. So, so working with this isometric view, so what we're going to do is I'll select the system, okay? And I want it to move. So let's see how we're going to do this. Okay, so let's just move from corner to corner. So we're starting from here and making connection with that. So that forms instantly a system, a two by two system. And of course, as usual, we need to make it and call it RVE two by two and select everything together. So that gives us a unit that uh, represents volume element with two by two. So similarly, we can then go ahead and do the same thing. So we can copy and do RVE three by three, three by three, exactly as Megan sets out to achieve. So if we go to the three by three system here, again, in the assembly module, so you only have one thing. So we just create pattern. And this pattern will just be a three by three pattern. So we'll just go and stay three and this is fine. So we've got the three system there and that looks all right. So again, we make a pattern of that because we want it three by three. So clearly we don't want that axis. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the direction of action back to the Z axis. Okay, back to Z axis. And we know that the system is 36.54.6. So that's clearly the connection between the two. So we've got a perfect match between that. And then we could also increase this a bit to get the three by three. So we've got three on this system. So all we need to do is to create a vertical system as well. So we select that. And then now the direction. So again, we don't want that. So we are now moving in the Y axis. Okay, so in the Y axis, and we want 36.4.6, which is the spacing apart, and then we we'll move one step on top. So that gives us the system that we're looking for. And as usual, we're going to then do RVE three by three, and we select everything and merge it, and it looks perfect. So that gives us a system that we are looking for. So that's what Megan set out to achieve. If you want to see the alternative way of creating it in a modified first center to be in Excel, this is the video that I want you to look at. Thank you for your interest in this channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.